أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم وقل جاء الحق وزحق الباطل إن الباطل كان زهوقا and say the truth has come and falsehood had vanished indeed the falsehood had to vanish Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in a sahih hadith it is in Bukhari بَلِّغُ anni walaw aya deliver from me even if it is an ayah. What is to be delivered? It is information, advice. Quran and Sunnah. Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. As salatu wa salamu ala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wa ala alihi wa ashabihi ajma'in. Amma bad, a'uzu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Rabbi shrah li sadri wa yassir li amri. وَحْلُ الْأُقْدَةً مِنْ لِسَانِ يَفْقَهُ قَوْلِ Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu My name is Hayat Amin Zada Brother and sisters, welcome to my channel Today is going to be another special video about Ismailism Our guest for today is Brother Habib Qambari And he's going to narrate to us his story his journey from Ismailism to Islam. For years, from Ismaili community, Ismaili brothers and sisters have left Ismailism and came to Islam and found the truth. And today we have one of the brothers here with us. So without any wait, we call here our brother Habib Qambari. How are you? Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen, okay, brother. Yeah. So brother, um, uh, could you just uh, give us a short introduction about yourself? Uh, my name is Habib. Um, I'm 28 years old uh, from Afghanistan. Yes. Um, well, that's my background. I was born in Pakistan. Yes. Uh, in the previous video, you, you saw my older brother, Shams. He's, uh, he's like sure. four years older than me. So sure. um, uh, we came to Canada about like 1997. Uh, I know that uh, it was uh, when we came to Canada. It was it was like a whole bunch of people, okay. a whole bunch of like the Ismaili community. We got sponsored by uh, Khan, okay. yes. and uh, yeah, and then we we resided in Toronto, Ontario, okay. in uh, three ninety dollars road. So okay. that's like the building. Yes, and and it was like pretty good pretty yeah. good time there so yeah. brother like um when Aga Khan brought you here you were in in Pakistan at that time yeah so you were one my, of the families okay yeah. and, and uh, know that when I came here I was, I was three years old okay so I don't really have much like recollection of oh, okay. me moving here right okay so my childhood is is in a western country not uh, like okay. so Mashallah. I don't really remember much but uh, like my earliest memories are like uh, from like you know being a Jamaat kind of five years old in Ontario, Mashallah. I don't, I don't, I don't think I have a memory of Pakistan. I'm too yes. young to have. You know? Yes, yes, yeah, yeah. So. And uh, so, uh, what about the what about the Jamaat Khanas here and in Pakistan? Is there a difference, or mainly they're the same? Uh, like I can't speak about Pakistan. Yes, Pakistan, okay. Because, um, like I said, like what I know is that we came from Pakistan. We're, we're sponsored by the Al Khan. Yes, yeah. And when we came, they. Um, like from just from me asking my mom and just you yes. know, inquiring about uh, like back home and my uncles and everybody and okay. and who they are and uh, and all that like mm -hmm. she's just telling us that uh, we had to migrate from Afghanistan to Pakistan when okay. we got there um, uh, we got help and we got help and moved here and then, like I said some of my earliest memories they're in uh, they're in Ontario okay yeah. So, brother, my first question to you is, how much were you dedicated to Aga Khan when you were in Ismaili? Uh, I'm, like, I, I would say I was dedicated as much as, uh, as much as, like, you know, a five-year-old or six-year-old would be, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, I would say a, a lot of my, uh, my, you know, real thinking about Islam mm -hmm. was when I moved to Calgary. Okay. And maybe like maybe like ten years later from like okay. nineteen ninety seven or something. Yes. But like, what I do know is that like, um, right from the get go, right from yes. like a young age. Yes. I knew like uh, we would go to Jamaat Khana. Mm -hmm. 
uh, a lot of time we would, we would walk there huh. and we walk from 390 Dawes Road which, yes. which is like uh, like a building in Ontario yes and we walk all the way to headquarters Kane right mm -hmm. and in between there's a library okay. where the bus would pick us up oh, okay and uh, sometimes we would miss the bus on purpose mm. or sometimes like uh, Usually we'd miss the bus on purpose because we don't want to go, right? We take too long, right? <laughs> yeah. And so we end up walking all the way to Jawad Khana <laughs> and then, and then um, just basically uh, go there and then spend our time there. And then the bus would drop us in the evening time back, yes. to, back to the library, where, right. library. which was uh, five minutes from the, our building. Okay. So how much yeah. were you dedicated to the Imam? Like how much were you like um, in, in a contact with the Imam, in love with the Imam? And how much were you asking from the Imam? And what was your dedication like to the Imam when you were Ismaili? So, like, like in the beginning in Ontario, right? Yes. The only like knowledge of the Imam that I had was the picture in the prayer hall. Mm. Okay. You know, so I I actually didn't know the Imam that well. Mm -hmm. uh, like all I knew, all I knew of the Imam was like I've just seen a picture of him mm -hmm. on the wall. Yes. And I and if you open up the dua book. Yes. Uh, his picture is on the second page. Ah, okay. So you you know you know okay this uh, the icon is like mm. someone who's you know important, right? Yes, yes. But yes, uh, I I was too young to understand like how mm -hmm. important he is to the to the smiley yes. smiley faith, right? Yes. But in in terms of dedication, the dedication. Like if I think about it, like overall. Yes. I'll be honest. Like I uh, I think a lot of. Uh, I'll, like, I would, I would say that Allah saved me mm -hmm. from like uh, that dedication. You know, dedication, yes. Because I, I feel like if you, Allah has guided you. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, if, uh, if sometimes you you see something or you don't know you you see you see something you go you go to somewhere where you're not supposed to be. Yes. Uh, whether like people are partying or people are doing like really like bad things or yes, or uh, they're doing like things that like mm -hmm. are. They just don't feel right, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And then, and then later on, you you realize, oh, this thing that is not feeling right, it, it's either uh, Allah's protecting you from something physical, mm -hmm, or mm -hmm. Allah's protecting your iman. Yes. And and in the case of this dedication, Allah, I would say, is protecting my my Protect, iman. Protecting your because iman. Because yes. if I if I was like really dedicated to the iman, then maybe I wouldn't ask as many questions as I did. Absolutely. You so you me? had questions in your mind. Oh, you? I had I had questions. Well, I okay. had questions. But uh, but were they honestly were they answered by the Ismaili community those questions? Uh, uh, let's like they were. I, I wouldn't. I'm not sure if they were answered by. I didn't really ask a lot of Ismailis. To be honest, okay. I didn't ask a lot of Ismailis. It's more. But did Islam what, what answer what those doing. questions for you? Did Islam answer those questions? Yeah, of yes. of course, Islam answered those questions for me. But where the answers come from is in the beginning. In mm -hmm. the beginning, where mm -hmm. the answers came from was the was the actions and what they were doing. Mm -hmm. Do you understand? Know yes. Because yes. I'm too young to go to a book, yes. and, or like, or, and I'm too scared to go to the Muki Sahib yes. and say, "Hey, Muki Sahib, I'm having uh, this this type of difficulty, right?" Yes, yes. And yes. and say, "Hey, Muki Sahib, like, I need some help or whatever." And I'll, actually, you know what? If I if I recall, if if I did go to Muki Sahib, he he would definitely say to me like, um, "Oh, just maybe like." Uh, like uh, I'm not sure how they phrase it because it's been such a long time. Yes. But yes. they they'll say something along the lines of like you know like uh, mm. call call upon like uh, uh, mm. you know Allah and call upon like and mm. just seek help from see, oh they, this is what they say this is they say oh may may Mulan mom mm. uh, give you like health and like, mm. give you health give you like sustenance may make you strong in your faith yes may do all these things right yes and so these are these are the kind of answers. Of, because I'm a kid. Yes. Do you understand? Yes. They're yes, not yes. going to give me an answer where it's like, mm -hmm. uh, where it's like either logical or like where it's from a, a book yes. or something yes. like that. And because this is this is by the this is Ontario this is yes. Ontario face right. Yes. But uh, but yeah like but other than that like, um, you like I'm just a kid. I'm running around yes. Jokhana. Yeah. <laughs> I'm yeah. causing havoc. <laughs> yes. I'm yes. causing uh, and, and, commotion. And thus, you yeah. know. I'm uh, mixing up people's shoes where they where they put up with the shoes, you know, because it's funny, you know, things like that. Like you're just yes. a kid, right? Yeah, but you're then, just, uh, absolutely, absolutely. And that's the thing about the Ismaili community, right? They do their their actually their dedication to the Imam is there. They love the Imam, right? The Ismaili community, but they don't know what they're saying to him. 
They yeah. don't know what they're asking. Like the things, the dua that you should be making to Allah, that dedication takes you to the Imam. Because the the love of Iman, Imam that is put in your heart from the childhood, that yeah. that's put yeah, in your they, heart. They do, that direct, you. they do direct your yes. your your love, the the love and the praise yes. to the Imam so that maybe they can like So instead of Allah, now you're asking the Imam. Yeah. You know, so that's the thing. So my other question, brother, is uh, tell me more about your activities and like Jamaat Khana when you were there, the activities that they do. For example, like the the when you go to Jamaat Khana, right when you enter, uh, what what kind of activities do you see? Like what do the people do? And uh, uh, from right to from the beginning to the when you're done, dua so, and all that stuff. Yeah. So like again, like like uh, I want to do this in like a little bit of phases, right? So yes. I want to kind of start with the. Yes, with uh, with my childhood, and then maybe yes. go to my sure, yeah, no problem, yeah. Then, That's why we're here. We're, uh, yeah. we're here to so, hear what you have to say. Uh, so again, like when I was a child, uh, like young, like under ten, you yes. know. Um, in Khan, I'm just like running around, and Absolutely. when they're when they're praying, I'm going, I'm running outside and playing around like the gardens and everything. And, yes. And when I would go inside, when I would go to the actual prayer hall, yes. Then uh, I would see like uh, the women. Mm. A lot, a lot of women, they would like uh, put their hands on the ground. Put their uh, hands on the ground. Oh, when like right when they enter. When they're entering, yeah, when oh. they're entering the prayer hall, right? That's okay. a that's a big thing. They yes. do that, and they say like. Uh, uh, and then somebody else will say right? Yes, yes. And like you, you hear these things, but you don't know, you don't know what it is, right? Yes. Uh, and then like, um, they will be like lay 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 Yes. And like uh, they would have, uh, I remember like especially like when I was younger, mm -hmm. uh, they like we would stay in the stay in the mosque all night long. Yes, yes. And we would do like uh, these these chants. Yes, yes. So yes. we do like a certain chant for like so long, and another chant for so long, and another chant for so long, and we do this all all through the night, right? And what's like what's the chant? What's the chant? Like they're saying. Uh, ya Ali, Ya Muhammad, Ya Muhammad, oh, okay. Ya Ali. So it's a zikr. Astaghfirullah, astaghfirullah. So, yeah. So it's so a zikr. They do, they do things like this. Uh, okay. This is like from my early childhood. Okay. That, that I remember. And uh, they would do like... Uh, and yeah, so like I'd go I'd go into the prayer hall. I'd do like these chants with them. And then when I, when I get like restless, then I'll go out and just run around again. And then go back. And then like uh, do some more chants. And then... Um, Go to the social hall, help uh, you know volunteer. Volunteers. Yeah, and then um, they have like uh, like people would bring food mm -hmm, mm -hmm. from their house and they'd cook cook uh, the food, right? Yes. And so I would cook some food, or and my cousin cooks food, and some other family cooks some food, mm -hmm. and then they put it on these big huge tables, yes. and then people would gather around the tables, and mm -hmm. then they would uh, what's it called? They would. Um, they would say, oh, we're, they would auction off the food. Auction off the food. You know? <laughs> and then the, the guy would be standing, oh, 25 cents, 50 cents, uh, you know? And yeah. we really cheap, $3 for a plate, and then you get like some really good, uh, yeah, you, you know, some, Indian yeah. food and yeah. some Koja food and some yeah. Afghan food. And uh, But have you ever wondered where that money goes? It, you know? Uh, I don't wonder where the money no, goes, you yeah. know, because I'm eating the food, right? But yeah. obviously you understand where the, where the money is going. It's going yes. to the imam, so he um, Essentially, like uh, at Jamaat Khana, when, when they would pray, uh, they have like six prayers, and uh, they would like uh, re like recite those six prayers. Like six parts of one prayer, pretty much, right? Yeah, I guess I guess it's six parts of one prayer, but they okay. would recite that those six parts in one one sitting. Okay. Uh, then they they would like, uh, um, yeah, I guess they were yeah then. Uh, what else would they do? Is there is there a wudu before the prayer or purification? Uh, like when I, I, don't think, I personally don't think there is wudu we'll before we do we'll okay. do before um, we we'll do before the prayer. Okay. I think maybe they'll just tell you just take a shower, but I don't know if they they will say uh, do certain rituals yes. in that shower. But uh, yeah, like I remember I, I remember in the social social hall like on a Saturday Sunday my mom would, would send me to uh, uh, um, I forget what it's called. It was like a. Uh, like a day school, mission class. Mission, it's called class. mission class. There mission you go. Class. Okay. They sent me the mission class, but in Ontario, because I was younger, they, it would just be in the social hall, a bunch of kids all sitting in circles with mm -hmm. teachers, mm -hmm. and then they'd give us like um, books, okay. like little books that are orange. Some of them were orange, some of them were blue, mm -hmm. and they they would all be talking about just the, about Islam and the women in Islam and 
meaning like when I say the woman in Islam, I'm not talking about the uh, the uh, like the time of the Prophet Muhammad yes. I'm talking about like the Fatimid Empire. Yes. So they will teach you a lot about the Fatimid Empire, things that would happen in the Fatimid Empire, stuff like that. But uh, there's no, there's no, they would never teach me certain rituals that mm -hmm. I uh, that I have to do before prayer, mm -hmm. like wudu, or uh, they were going to teach me things like. Or even things that, like when I'm walking to the masjid, mm -hmm. the du'as that you have to walk, the du'as that you could say, mm -hmm. you know, nothing yes. like that. But so that those things weren't there in the Jamaat Khana. Yeah, they, I don't okay. think they were. They were there. No. Okay, brother. So when, uh, like, see in Islam, when 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 in Islam, so what happens is when we walk into the masjid, we pray, and all our Islamic duties are just according to the Quran and Sunnah. So the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam taught us the Sunnah. In, in Quran, it tell, tells us about everything, yeah. how our daily life is, and what we have to do. Even even like um, waking up from sleep, and even when you're going to sleep, there is a dua we recite. We praise Allah. Every single thing we do in our life, we praise Allah. Before we start food, we say Bismillah. Yeah. All these duas, Islam is beautiful. What made you think... And when did you actually realize that there was something wrong with Ismailism that was just going totally against the Islamic values, Islamic Sharia? When did you realize? And what was it that you realized? When was it? When was it? Uh, I, for me, it wasn't uh, like the. So, like, under, like you have to understand that, uh, or maybe you should know that uh, when I was younger, right? Mm -hmm. I was all, I was thinking about God, even mm. though I'm four, five, six years old. I'm thinking I'm thinking about God, mm -hmm. okay, or Allah, right? I remember that uh, one time I was walking from from the park, mm -hmm. yes, to my house, right? Yes. Yes. And uh, and when you're walking on the sidewalk, yes. there's there's cracks on the ground, you know, mm -hmm. there's like five foot cracks, yes. right? And I'm and I'm like four, like five, six years old, and I'm like jumping, like over these cracks. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm jumping left and right so that I don't step on them. Oh, okay. Because I'm trying to like uh, how you say I'm trying to like uh, I'm thinking about God. I'm like, oh God, knows I'm gonna step on this crack, but I don't want to step on it. So I'm trying to trick him. Oh. You understand? Okay. So uh, when you when you when you when you have like this type of mentality where mm -hmm. you're young and you're thinking about Allah, then when you get older and you're still thinking thinking about Him, then you then you realize, oh okay, uh, you know Allah is Allah is important to you, right? Yes. And when we moved from Ontario to uh, Calgary, yes, uh, like I didn't have much friends in, in Ontario, but when I when I grew when I moved to Calgary, yes. I gained a little bit of friends. They're diverse. I didn't know anything about Sunni or Shia mm -hmm. when I was in when I moved to Calgary. It was yes. only like uh, um, when my when my older sister she married she married a Sunni. Okay, okay. and from then, he my brother-in-law started teaching us about. The fundamentals of Islam. Okay. So he, would, he when he would come over, mm -hmm. uh, and then he would like teach us. Oh, this is what this is who Allah is. Mm -hmm. This is wh who the messenger is. Yes. This is who um, like his family is. Like this is who uh, this is what the Papa is. This is like the, mm -hmm. the lifetime. This is how to pray. This is this is Hajj. This is how you pr how you um, make Rusul. Yes. This is how you make wudu. So this this uh, my brother in law was the introduction. To me, actually getting actual knowledge, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, like Islam. actual actual knowledge or actual teachings um, about Islam, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and not so much. Uh, and if I if I if I contrast that to the Ismaili Ismaili like mission class, yes, they don't teach you, they don't they teach, teach you. They'll teach you about prayers, right? The six prayers or whatever, but they don't um, they don't uh, what's it called? They don't go past that. They don't go past that. You know, you have to like. They won't give you more answers after the prayers, you know. They will say the prayers are enough for you, yes. and then that's it. But uh, my brother-in-law was the real introduction. When, yes. when, when I got there, when I started, when he started teaching me how to pray, right? Yes. Then I'm like, oh, why we like I'm praying standing? What? Mm. What? Mm. This is this is different. Yeah. <laughs> you know why and am I praying standing? Smileys, smileys because smileys don't pray standing. Yeah. Right. That's... They pray sitting down, and then and then they also uh, and then they pray next to women. Yes. Right. There's Depending on like every Jumaat is a little bit different, but you're always going to be next to women, mm -hmm. and there's no there's no divider. There's between, no divider, right? Yeah, yeah. So here I am. My They're just pretty teaching, much sitting next to you. Yeah, my brother in laws my brother is teaching me how to pray. My younger brother how to pray. My old my my older sisters right, and my my youngest sister right. Yes. 
Uh, he's just teaching us. He's like, this is how you do it. This is how you don't do it. This is this is what it is. He's teaching us the meaning, mm. right? And then, in and the that's du- when you realize. That's when you realize. That's like the, something wrong. Something's different. Okay. Okay. Then I realize. Oh, my brother-in-law. Okay. There's uh, th- my brother Sunni, and I'm Shia. Yeah. He's Somali Shia. Yeah. Okay. What does that mean, right? What does that mean? Yeah. So yeah. now the when I moved when I when I was in Calgary, now like the questions started to come when mm. I was in junior high. And now so this is the time you're growing up. And yeah. So yes. from grade seven, grade eight, grade nine, grade ten, like junior high, that's kind of the 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 start. Like when I started asking a lot of questions, and then, um, but yeah, it was it was like, um, like basically figuring out okay, why they, why are they praying like this? Mm-hmm. Why are they praying sitting down, and why am I praying standing up? Right? Yes, yes. And then it was for me to decide. Uh, well, not really for me. To, oh. And you knew automatically that you know the pro- this is not the prophet's way. No, that mm-hmm. that's where I had to learn. Yes, I didn't know that wasn't the oh, prophet's way, was right? The, yeah, was it was way. only he was like my brother was telling me, okay, this is this is uh, this is how he prayed. This is how the prophet prayed. Mm-hmm. Then now I go to the Ismaili Jawah Khan and I and I, I have another life. It literally, it's another life, right? Yes, because yes. now like I'm like, oh, why am I uh, doing this a certain way when the prophet prayed this way? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And okay. then and, and then I realized, oh, it was the imam, the imams. One of the one person in the line of imams, or maybe a few people in the line of imams, that slowly changed the prayer, mm. right? Yes, yes. So when I started learning about like the foundations of Islam, when I started learning about the roots of Islam, when I started learning about where Islam came from, mm. when I started learning about who it came for, yes. why did it come to the Arabs, mm. right? Why did they get a prophet? You know, stuff like that, like simple mm. questions, and then uh, and I and then learning about like. Um, what what type of message was the prophet preaching, Salam. right? So some right, and and then like s- slowly when I learned these things, I'm ke- I'm going to Jamaat Khana at the same time, right? Yes. You know, like and you're one, comparing. one time, no, one, you're time comparing. one one <laughs> maybe two times uh, two times uh, a month. My brother in law is teaching us. He's coming yes. over, yes. and then, and then every Friday, every Friday I'm going to the Jamaat Khana and I'm see and I'm doing something different. Yes, and so like. Um, I realized, okay, the imam, the imam is changing things. I'm like, mm. fundamentally, if the imam is changing, if the imam can change the prayer, mm. I'm going away from the roots of Islam. Mm, yes. And so, when I, f- I felt that, like, in my heart, if I'm going away from the roots of Islam, mm. I'm, I'm, I would say, not, I could be a better Muslim. I could be a better Muslim. By practicing a little bit differently, right? And so, that's kind of like, the, and I didn't want to go further away from Allah, because, again, like, in my childhood, I'm I'm thinking about Allah. I, I love Allah. Yes. I wanna, I yes. wanna praise Him. I wanna you already him. have that. You know what I mean? I have that iman, right? Yes. yes. And, and like you wanna like, like uh, make Allah happy, right? And Absolutely. You 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 start reading the Quran for yourself in your own room, and you start reading about heaven and hell and all these all these things, right? And you don't want to be in like. Or you don't want to be in hell, right? Yes. And so when so, when you realize that somebody can change some something fundamental mm-hmm. to Islam, mm-hmm. then you have to you have to one day one day draw the line and say, okay, I can't I can't follow this way anymore because yes. um, uh, fundamentally in the religion, you're able to change something like this, yes, and then and it will become something different be later something. on. It will be just the opposite right? of what the Prophet taught us. Yeah. Pretty much, right? And so, yeah, like, yeah. So, brother, um, my next question is, what gave you the strength uh, after after going all these changes in your life? It's a hard time for you. Uh, your brother in lies there. Uh, he's teaching you the Islam. Uh, you're uh, inter- getting introduced to the Quran and the Sunnah and the way of the Prophet. And now, and now you're going back to Jamaat Khana and you're seeing everything against the islamic values and the islamic sharia and now now you now now you want to change now you now you want to now you want to now you want to be you change your identity of what you are what are those strengths what are those strengths that you got um from allah uh, that that you can tell the viewers um uh, about like when you were leaving the ismailism what strength did you get um what are those strengths the you know, Islam. The fundamental fundamental thing about Islam is, is that you worship you worship Allah, right? Yes. Yeah. You love Allah, right? Yes. So ultimately, for myself, that was the strength. That was the strength. You know, from when Allah. You, yes. Yes, from Allah, because Allah, He revealed the Quran, 
Yes. Right? Mashallah. And when he revealed the Quran, he revealed like stories about the, about the prophets. Mashallah. Right? And so when you when you read about the prophets, every single one of them, yes. they have they have like trials and tribulations. Yes. That are unique to, unique to some uh, to, that are unique to them. Yes. And so I'm thinking, oh, okay, like these prophets are going through so, so much things. Uh, some of their children, they're they're some of the prophets' children, they're not Muslim. Mm. Right. Yeah. That's a big thing. Yes. Right. Yes. Uh, and that's a big, big trial and tribulation. Yes. And for myself, it was like, okay, the, uh, when I read about like the the story about like you know Ibrahim, right? Mm -hmm. Ibrahim is telling uh, his father. <laughs> May Allah give you supper, brother. And you know this is. Uh, a very emotional time and very emotional to come to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and, uh, and and leave and leave what's wrong and 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 you know this is this is the miracle of the Quran and when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran that you know my way is the right way and when you when you read the stories of the prophets and what they went through this is the time to get emotional and this is the time uh, brother you know um, may Allah give you sabr and may you know may Allah keep you on the right uh, path of islam and 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 the the intention you have to do good and uh, and um, sorry give me one second you know yeah because yeah this is this is a hard topic you know yes yes, yes. can i get some questions if you don't mind so yeah just to answer the question like what gave me the strength it was Essentially, just the the prophetic stories, right? Yes. It was that you know how Ibrahim, he had, his father was a person who created idols, right? Yes. And he was asked, telling his father to like you know worship Allah, worship these things, right? Yes. Uh, worship Allah and worship worship the Creator, worship the Sustainer. You know, mm -hmm. this is better for you than doing something doing shirk. Yes. Right. And uh, and the the thing with the the smiley uh, smiley tradition. And like the the faith is that they have a lot of shirk in it, yes. right? And so, uh, essentially, like uh, they're always calling upon Ali, mm -hmm. they're always calling upon Muhammad, as if like, and they're always calling like they're telling you they're telling you like uh, uh, the Imam he's he can give you like uh, like oh may the Imam hear you may he give you strength may he mm -hmm. give like give you like wealth like you know like things like that you know and then you realize that like uh, like any person whether they're dead or whether they're alive they can't give you anything right when you read the Quran you realize that like there's only yourself on the day of judgment right and so you get scared and so you don't you don't wanna you, you don't wanna mix shirk into Islam Yes. And so you, you have to leave it. And in Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that I will not forgive shirk. I will forgive anything if you want, but he will not forgive shirk. So and for me, it was like, it doesn't matter what anybody says, is that I know that what I was doing, I don't want to do that. Yes. And I have to go towards Allah yes. and His merits. I have to go towards Allah and His Messenger, right? Yes. And you only get, you only know what that is if you you go back to the roots of Islam, and 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 you you learn about shirk. It is only when you learn about shirk. It is only when you learn about shaitan. That's only when you can uh, protect yourself from it. Yes. Right. You learn that there is not people that can give you protection from shaitan. Yes. There is not people that can give you protection from hellfire. Yes. It is only Allah, Allah and Allah attributes some Quranic verses that, that will give you that will give you protection on the day of judgment, right? Yes. And so these are the things where it's like, oh, uh, Allah is telling you on the day of judgment, your mother will not help you, your father will not help you, yes. your brothers will not help you, nobody will help you, your your wealth will not help you, nothing, nothing will help you, right? <sighs> and so it's. It's like, it, for me, it's okay to give up 80 years of my life, but in the hereafter, it's like, I don't want to give that. You don't want to give that.
Jazakallah khair brother to share your emotional story with us and so um, and brother also I wanted to ask you uh, about um, how did you how did your um, family react uh, to this when you when you announced that uh, you know when they know your faith how did your family uh, your cousins your uncles your uh, your your dad and your mom and your brother and sisters how did how did they all react your whole family community how did they react to the sudden change in you leaving uh, the aqida of ismailism where they ask from from imam to give them even a little thing and even such a big thing like asking the imam for giving them a child and make their make their ways easier how did uh, like and then you come to islam where islam teaches you to only ask allah and only ask allah Oh. And how 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 did your community, your family react to this? So first, I want to say, for me, it wasn't a sudden change. Sudden change, yes. For me, it was gradual. Gradual, right? Change. I would say, for me, from the time that uh, my my brother-in-law, alhamdulillah, has been married to my sister yes. for over like thirty fi- over fifteen years, yes. right? And so I would say, like, uh, actually, probably more than that now. Okay. And so from the time that he's been teaching me about the fundamental, well. When he started teaching me the fundamentals of Islam, till like I started, till I kind of realized, till high school was probably mm-hmm. like just f- five, six years in itself. Yes. You know. Yes. Because when you're a kid, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't really have Islam in your forefront. Yes. Right. Yes. But a big contributing factor to what kind of pushed me as well was like uh, our our father passed away, right? Mm. And so when he passed away, is it got me thinking about. The afterlife, the right? afterlife, yes. And w- where he's gonna go, where he's mm. not gonna go, and stuff like that. And then, when you think about death and something so immediate, like yeah. in your family, you have to start thinking about yourself. Yes. Right. So once I, once I like, this is like I don't, I never like told people anything about like my conversion. I never told my friends I was Sunni. I never told my friends I was Shia. I never told my friends I was my. I always, I always like. Uh, just kept it on a, on the down low, you know. Yes. Because it just my I I don't I can't even talk about these things if I don't even know like in myself, Absolutely. what like what I feel about them, right? Or yes. what what I know about them, right? Yes. Or you know things. So when I finally finally understood what what Islam like uh, is trying to teach you, trying to teach you towards the oneness of Islam. Don't don't uh, associate partners with this with uh, Allah. With well, right. Yes. And. When I realized that I was doing that, I had to start. I had to like near the end of high school, yes. two thousand eleven. Yes. Uh, I I was like, you know, I can't uh, I can't go to Jonathana anymore, you know. Yes. Or actually, you know, before uh, two thousand ten. So uh, yeah, so I was grade eleven. So yes. grade nine, grade ten, grade eleven. I started slowly not going to Jonathana. Mm. Right. And when I started not going to Jonathana, I started going to the masjid more. Mm. Right. Yes. Because the masjid masjid. Uh, uh, it was it was closer to the roots of Islam than the Jamaqana was. Subhanallah. Do you know what I'm saying? So fundamentally, when I walked into the Jumak, when I walked into uh, 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 the masjid, there's no pictures of any imam on the wall. There's no pictures of nobody. You know, it's just you in the masjid, right in the front row. There's no mukisab in front of you looking at you. Nobody. You know. Nobody. You can just go in the masjid anytime you want. Pray to Allah anytime you want. You know. And you know, just do do you think and have have like a, your own connection with Allah. Yes. You don't have to go through the Imam, to, or you don't have to go through Aga Khan. You know, uh, to ask him, oh, please do this for me, or please you do that for me. You can directly ask you know? Allah. You can directly ask Allah. You know, and like the more I, the more I learn about like the Ismaili tradition, the more I realize it's a lot like Christianity. Yes. And when you learn more about Christianity, you start you start seeing the similarities between what Ismailis are actually doing. Uh. Right, they they say, oh, the imam is not. They don't think that he's a prophet or, mm-hmm. or he's a god or whatever, right? But in their in what they're doing and in their actual teachings, yes. Because when you read the when you read the Ginans, everything's in yes. the actual the, teachings in the theology. Mm. That you you'll find that uh, mm. that the imam is deified. Mm-hmm. And when you ask the same thing a Christian, or oh, who is Jesus Christ? He'll say, is Jesus Christ your Lord? Mm. They'll say no, he's not my lord. What is he? He's oh, he's just like a uh, a, a person that will help us. He mm. had a connection with God, mm. so we go through Jesus to uh, to mm. go to God. 
and Ismailis they go through the Imam to go to God, right? Yes. And so I I didn't I don't I don't and and the Prophet teaches contrary to this. Yes. The Prophet is like, don't believe in me. Mm -hmm. You don't direct your prayers towards me. Direct your prayers around me and go to Allah. Yeah, go to Allah. For, yes. I'm just you have you have a direct connection uh, between yourself and Allah. I'm standing on the sideline to help you. Make sure that you're on the right path. Yes. And then once you're on the right path, you you you'll know like uh, you you'll have like a a sound heart, you know. Mm -hmm. But you don't get you don't have a sound heart when you're when you're in this man. No way. I so did your so. family had to uh, excommunicate you, or or did they, they look at you different when you start so, going to Jumat Khan? Oh, you start going so, to Masjid. No, the, the, so the, you interviewed my older brother, right? Yes. He got a lot of the. He got a lot of the. The what's it called? Okay. The, <laughs> he got the bad part. <laughs> he got the bad part. <laughs> I didn't get much of it, you know, because because uh, uh, I didn't. I wasn't so vocal, right? Yeah. And then when me and him eventually like uh, the thing about my Islam is I didn't even tell my older brother too, you know. Yes. It's yes. more like he does. He doesn't know where I'm going in terms of my faith, and I didn't really ask him where he's going. It's. I wanted to just figure out for myself, yes. figure out the evidence for myself. Once yes. I figured that out, then I realized, okay, this is the way I need to go. My brother was on the correct path. I need to go follow him. Yes. And and then uh, and then we started going to our cousins. Yes. But the the really bad thing is that when you when you feel so strongly about something, right? Yes. When you feel so, when you feel that oh, Allah talks a certain way about shirk. And yes. you want to protect yourself from it. Yes. Immediately yes. you go to your family. Yes. You want to protect natural. your family from natural. natural. Yes. Right. Natural. Yeah. But I'm young. You know. Yes. Uh, uh, I don't know how to talk. I don't know how to talk to. Uh, yes. The uh, elders and the. Family. To my elders, you know. I'm telling you, please, like, uh, like, don't do this and don't do that and like, you, we love you and, but sometimes you, you, your, uh, the fire inside you is, yes. is, is burning too bright, you know, you, yep. and you're too young to know how to when to hold back. Because now you know the and, truth, yeah, and you want to share it, right? So you that definitely want to share, and you have to share it, right? Yes. And so immediately you have to share it with your family. Yes, right? absolutely. And so sometimes, and so it, it caused like a, a huge rift mm. between, like, uh, let's say, like even even our house, our household, because mm -hmm. when you when you when you have like a certain ideology yes. that you you know is correct, that you, yes. that, you, that is more closer to Islam than mm -hmm. another ideology, you want to tell them what they're doing wrong. But then, when you tell them what they're doing wrong, sometimes you say it too aggressively. Yes. And then it's too. Yeah. And you don't know. Yes. yes, yes. Because you you're just too passionate. You're, yes. You love your brothers and you love your sisters too much, right? Yeah. And so it's only later that you realize, oh man, I'm I'm so harsh. I, and then you start mm -hmm. learning about how how the prophet, even the prophet when he when he got re revelation, right? Yes. Immediately the first three years he kept a secret, mm -hmm. and immediately he he told his family yes. right he went to his wife first yes. and and is, is narrated that uh, Khadija yes. may Allah be pleased with her she was the, one of the first Muslims right yes. so he went to his wife and then his uh, his uncles and everybody and then like sooner or later his uncles were like okay you, you've you been telling us this in secret for three years or we or the prophet was like oh I've been telling you in secret for three years now I have to tell you openly I have to what's it called like call you out you know what I'm saying Yes, absolutely. And, and so, like, uh, and so I feel like this, the work that you're doing is really important, you know, like, um, you're, all, you're gonna, like, ha just to actually answer the question, maybe, like, yes. um, you're gonna get, you're, you're gonna get back, sometimes you're gonna get backlash from your, your yes. family, yes. sometimes you get backlash from your cousins, yes. just, just remember that if it took you eight years to come yes. to Islam, if it took you, yes. uh, like, you know, 15 yes. years or however long, yes. Give give thirty years. Give double the amount of time to your uh, to, to your family. family. Yes, absolutely. And that's and that's one thing, brother. You know what an uh, Subhanallah emotional story, and you know the brother brother Habib has uh, just lifted our iman and just just reminded of of our time, and uh, how we felt when we were disconnected with our family, and how much uh, passion he has for his family and his and his. Uh, his father and when he passed away and and then that's when he realized that he had to um, at this point uh, he has to find out where am I going where is his father going after death and all these questions are rising up in his mind right now at this time 
and uh, subhanallah allah is the only protector and allah is the only guide and uh, guided our, our dear brother habib and habib brother the next uh, question of my mind is so what change uh, did you find in yourself after becoming muslim at this point like um, at this point like uh, you're gone all through these stages and and now at, at now as a muslim right now what what changes do you see right now uh, which compares to when you were in Ismaili or the other Ismailis? Which uh, changes do you see uh, right now? Honestly, I would say that, you know, like uh, for myself, I'm more content yes. with my faith. Yes. I'm more happy. Yes. Uh, Subhanallah. And like, I realize that like, uh, that, you know, like uh, whatever, like, uh, whatever, like, you know, trials or tribulations that you get, yes, like it's always a benefit for you. Yes, you a know? benefit for you. Yes. So, whatever like uh, goodness I have, like you just say alhamdulillah for it, and then whatever bad you have, you all say alhamdulillah for it, and alhamdulillah. that's kind of like Islam teaches you that because you're a believer, if you get pricked by like even a thorn, um, it's a good thing for you. It's an expiation of your sins, you know, mm -hmm. and on and and the only thing we can actually hope for on the day of judgment is that we have less sins. Yes. Right? Because yes. we're always gonna commit them, right? Yes. And so I just feel like if I if I was an Ismaili, I don't I honestly like I would say if I was an Ismaili today, um like I don't know if I would if, if I would believe in Islam. SubhanAllah. And the reason why I would say that is because I know of Ismailis that, that don't uh yes. that they say they're Ismaili but they don't believe in uh anything about Ismailism. Yes. And so they, I'm not sure where they are in their faith or yes. where they're going. Yes. May Allah give them like hidayah, yes. you know. But uh, yes, but brother, you know, is, like maybe I would be like them, you know. Yes. You know, so yes. I don't want to. Alhamdulillah, like I don't want to be. I don't want to be like that. No, no. Like, yes, it's, it's, I'm just more content. I would say. Yes. And that's what um, Jazakallah Khair, brother, for sharing that with us. This is something that even as uh, uh, Muslims uh, need to know that what uh, what a gift uh, it is uh, that they have from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Islam is what a, what a gift it is, and the contentment and the happiness we get of just asking Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. So the brother um, Habib is trying to tell us that he's find um, the contentment and the happiness more uh, more content right now than what he was before he has the sense of happiness in his heart yeah. and a uh, brother does um uh, as f like we know that uh, in, in in islam we have five pillars can you um, uh, tell us um, if they uh, ismailis follow the five pillars of islam or it's just uh, like for example we go we do hajj we go for for hajj and um, we do tawaf there and we go for umrah and um, we do five times prayer. Uh, uh, it's the morning, afternoon, and then uh, sunset, and before the yeah. sunset, and Aisha, right? So we do these five times prayers, and also the zakat I talked about, Ramadan, a month of fasting, oh, yeah. and most importantly, the kalima, which is Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah, which is the declaration of the faith. Yeah. Um, do you have anything to say about that uh, uh, to share with? Uh, so if you if uh, you know if you go if you like uh, if you go back to the roots of Islam, right? Because if you need to the thing with Ismailism, right? Ismailis, yeah. right? Your your history does not start at the Fatimid Empire. Yes. Right. Yes. Your your history starts at the Prophet Muhammad Yes. Right. You you can't. Uh, you can't uh, go to like mission class and just learn about the Fatima Empire yes. and mm, like learn about what they did, what they didn't Absolutely. do, and everything. You have to one day say to yourself, you have to one day say to yourself, okay, what 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 happens in the life of the Prophet Muhammad so, so, yes. so right? Yeah. You, when when you go to the teachings, when you go to uh, who he was, what he did with his life, you you realize that the the shahada yes. was not laced with uh, mm -hmm. Was not laced with uh, a shirk. Yes, you understand. Which yes. is what the Ismailis are doing. Yes, because when when they uh, when they when they give the shahada, right? Yes, they're they're giving their allegiance obviously to the, obviously to Ali, right? Yes, but in in their prayers as well, they're mm -hmm. they're they're calling upon uh, um, the Imam mm -hmm. and Ali 
uh, and uh, Muhammad for um, for like strength and for forgiveness and for all these things all in one paragraph no 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 periods just commas you know what I mean mm -hmm. and so you you just think about like um, what they're doing and then you just realize man like this is not uh, this is not a way to live okay. in terms of like um, uh, so that's the shahada yes um, and in the prayer yes. the prayer uh, I, like I said if you go back to Islam go back to the roots go back to the uh, mm -hmm. to when it began when be when it began mm -hmm. you realize that the Prophet did not so, pray sitting he yeah. did not pray he did not pray next to women without a curtain you know yes. Uh, he prayed standing. He prayed, and Wallahi, this is actually a beautiful way. There to was pray. a cool. There was such. Yes, right? yeah. there's a beautiful way to pray. You, you, you have Allah. He created you. He created the whole world. He gives you. He lets you breathe. You know, uh, a leaf doesn't fall without his permission. Absolutely. You know, yes. and how yeah, this is a person. You, this is a uh, an entity. You, you're praying to the creator. You're praying to right. Mm -hmm. Why would you want to pray sitting down and just, uh, just uh, bow a few times? You know. Yes. Yeah. That's not the right it's way. It's not you know? even the real sajda. Yeah. Right? Uh, yeah, and so like, and so like, you have the problem. How he's praying a certain way. He's doing these these beautiful movements, yes. right? And then, and then, you, and then, uh, when you go to the jatana, it, it's totally different. It's totally different. One it's of the imams the, changed totally it. Totally opposite. One of the imams changed it. Yeah. Uh, whether it's for war or whatever, whatever, it doesn't matter. The fact that you changed it, yes. it means that. In the future, yes. your religion will become something totally different. Totally different. Yes. Because now you allow for change. No, you're not. Right? No, you're That's a very the, dangerous thing. Now you're opening that door. You open the door. You open a door a long time ago. No, you no. know? Yes, absolutely. Uh, in terms of like the the, exactly. cha the charity. Yes. So after sorry, so shahada. Yes. Uh, the, the prayer. The prayer. And then the, hajj, the hajj. Hajj and the charity. Well, yeah. We'll go charity first. Okay. Uh, in terms of charity, like. Islam teaches you to give charity anytime you want. You know, there's yes. there's little, there's different types of sadaqah. Yes. Right. So, the some some types of sadaqah where you have to give it. The zakat is two point five percent. Yes. Right. Absolutely. Every year before before Eid, uh, before Ramadan Eid, right. Yes. But then uh, and then it's distributed like locally, mm -hmm. or you can send it uh, send it um, yes. abroad, right. But usually usually the zakat is in your own in your community, right. Yes. But with the Ismaili tradition, the all like the the change that they gather from like the at the yes. at the front of the hall. Yes. It all goes to the imam, and then the the. It's imam supposed to go to the it. poor, but it's the, going to the rich. But yeah. the, but the thing, but the thing, this is the big thing, okay? The Prophet Muhammad son, he by Allah forbade him from collecting zakat and spending it on himself. Yes. You understand? Yes. It was always it was, and you have you have the contrary where the imam, the the Ismaili imam, he takes the uh, any donation mm -hmm. and he uses it for for other people, but as well for himself. For himself. If anybody claims to have like uh, the lineage from the Prophet Muhammad, right? So some they can't they can't by law take sadaqa for themselves and spend it for themselves. Mm -hmm. They have yes. to go out and they have to work for their own money. Yes. Right. And so I feel that like. Some of the money that he that he's uh, he's collecting, for sure he he's using it for to buy whether it's to buy his own bread or buy his own, uh, pay the, his mortgage or whatever. Like the problem was, some didn't do this, and I don't think uh, I don't think they uh, anybody like anybody that claims to yes, this um, is, yeah, uh, be from the lineage of the problem was, should be should be taking money yes. and then spending it on and himself. Hajj, or about Hajj. Uh, in, in terms of in terms of Hajj, um, they have. They don't have. I don't. They don't have Hajj. Yes. What they have is didars. Okay. They have like jubilees and uh, gold, mm. like golden jubilee, diamond yeah. jubilee, platinum jubilee, and then the next one that will be coming. You know. Mm. And so. Uh, and they, in this, in these jubilees, so, they're collecting money too. Yeah. yeah. Another thing, with these, with these, is not so much. Uh, so with these, uh, with these things, the whole point is that you see the imam, mm. right? So. Throughout the whole year, when you live in a Western country, you don't see you don't see the Imam much, mm. right? Because he doesn't live in the West. He lives in the yes, uh, yeah. uh, like uh, London, Europe, Europe, right? And he sees he sees uh, India a lot, and he sees Tanzania a lot, and Kenya a lot, right? These mm. people they get didars all the time. So you in the Ismaili community, they always say, "Oh, we wish you a happy didar." You know that you get to see the the face of the uh, mm. Imam, mm. 
mm. right? And then they say, oh, if you get to see the the Imam, it's as if it's as if you you went to Hajj. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And so you can't you can't say you can't say uh, you can't like put someone on a pedestal mm. where you replace a fundamental aspect mm. of Islam. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. And so you you take the fundamental aspect of Islam, which is Hajj. If you can, if you have the money to go, you go. If you don't have the money, then inshallah, inshallah Allah will, will make will do something to fix your situation, right? Yes. But you can't replace. You can't say, oh, you don't need to go to Hajj anymore. And uh, now instead of Hajj, we we're gonna go do the didars. And then if you see my face, then uh, may like the newer from my face help you and help you this, and may he, may Allah grant you, you know. If there was something right? like this to see the face of somebody, and your Hajj is accepted, it would be the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But it wasn't not even allowed for him. Yeah. You know, so it's the ritual that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says to go yeah. and visit. In the Quran, Allah says to go and visit uh, Mecca and Kaaba and do the tawaf yeah. and, and all those rituals. And because he did these things <coughs> as a sunnah, when the Prophet Muhammad did these things as a sunnah, we, have to, we do it. We do it as a sunnah to follow those things too. To right? follow the steps of to the Prophet the steps, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, because even Muhammad even Ali Razielan who he and went we, he went for Hajj. Yeah, and when he you don't perform do these the things, uh, duties of Hajj. Yeah, and when you don't do these things or you replace these things, you you lose a fundamental aspect of Islam, which means you're changing it. And yes. You're going further away, right? Yes, and that's what it is, brother. You know, like the whole uh, deen of Ismailism that they have, the, the way of Ismailism is totally against the. The Islam, uh, the five pillars are not there, like Brother Habib uh, has mentioned. Um, uh, all these four, like Hajj, uh, looking at the Imam and the prayers, uh, five prayers are not there. It's just a couple of times a day they pray and that's just sitting down. And uh, there is no Ruku and Qiyam, there's no Sujood, yeah. so there's no asking from Allah. Uh, and also the zakat, and it's two point five percent in Islam, and it's way more. Um, uh, it's twelve point five percent in Ismailism, and you know Ramadan also is not even uh, practiced in the Ismailism. So, brother, uh, the next question. Oh yeah, I have... Ramadan. That's another thing. Yes. If I could just uh, go on that, like yes, when they when they fast, right? They fast from uh, only twelve hours. Okay. They don't fast uh, from sunrise to sunset. Yes. In the, in the uh, if you go to, when I used to go to Jawat Khan, right? Yes. Some people would fast. The old people would fast from six a.m. to six p.m. Mm -hmm. Right, something like that. In the, the long days. In the long days. Yeah. When the, the days are long, right? Well, when the days are short. Yeah, and the and so and like a, a lot of the people, and even like the uh, the Muki Sahib or like the uh, some of his volunteers, his close volunteers. If you ask them, oh, can I do? It, can do I have to fast from sunrise to sunset? Mm -hmm. You ask these uh, these knowledgeable people that are representatives yes. of yeah. the Imam, yes. right? If these Muki Sahibs or the the people that are next to the Muki Sahibs telling you something, yes. right? Then obviously that information is either coming from the Imam himself. Yes. Yes. So if it's coming from the Imam himself, yes, it's, it's coming from his spiritual. These guidance. people are representing. Yeah, representing him, right? Yeah. So it's coming from the Imam. They're appointed they're, by him. Yeah, right? it's coming from Hazrat spiritual guidance, yes. which is going down to these Muki Sahibs and everything. So they're telling you don't 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 uh, fast from. Uh, or they're saying you can fast, but you don't need to. They're but if you don't, you do if whatever. you don't fast, it's okay. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and some they, they don't fast at all. Yeah. You know, I'll say about I'll say about um, when I was going to Jawat Kana, I'll say about outwardly, a lot of people will say no. Actually, I can't. I can't say. I'll say um, a lot. Of, I would say I fasted. Alhamdulillah, I fasted every Ramadan from mm. sunrise to sunset mm -hmm. because my brother-in-law taught me. Right. Yes. He taught me the fundamentals of Islam. But when you go, to, but uh, with the uh, with the fasting of them, they'll say, no, it's not that important. Don't don't fast for that long, or you're too young, uh, you're too this, you're too that. Uh, and then ultimately, again, you you're changing a fundamental aspect of Islam, mm -hmm. and, and you're changing it by your own because of your own desires, right? Yes. And why is it fundamental, right? Mm -hmm. If the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam did something, right? He did something a certain way, right? Yes. Allah, like, ordained him to do it that way, yes. right? Because everything he does is, it's like... Uh, he was commanded by Allah. Yeah. Yes. It, it, in terms of spiritual guidance, he's the highest, right? Yes. He's the highest. If your imam is telling, is telling you something other than what the Prophet Muhammad is Sorry. doing and saying, then that means that uh, you're, you've now diminished the Prophet Muhammad yes. 
you right? You you brought the Prophet Muhammad down, yes, so some, and you brought your Imam up yes. because now you're following the Imam of the time, mm -hmm. and you and your Prophet your, your your Prophet who's supposed to be the leader mm -hmm. is now here because you're not following him anymore. Yes. Same thing with Christians too. Yes. You 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 see what Jesus did in his life, what he what he uh, what he preached. He always preached the oneness of God, yes. and then. And then when you uh, go to the priest, they say, "Oh, uh, do something else." You know, yes, you don't yes. do, don't do. Uh, uh, we, we do it this way because our doctrine is this way. We are, we we believe in the Trinity and three in one and all the stuff. And yes, it's, it's really, it's really similar to Christianity and yes, uh, of the Ismailism. Yeah, yes, brother. Yes. So and with the Ramadan, is... with the Ramadan, Jazakallah uh, Khair uh, for giving us the information. Uh, the uh, Ismail is not following the proper procedure of what Allah says in the Quran to fast from the sunrise to sunset and limiting it to a certain time. Sometimes, can I add? Sometimes, like some Ismailis will say, "Oh, some things are maybe not in the Quran." Yes. But you have to understand, as Muslims, we take the Quran as uh, as um, as our primary source material. Okay, that's the Quran. Our, our secondary source material is uh, the hadiths, right? These are the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad. These are the, the actions, what he did, what he didn't do. All these things. These are also. This is also evidence, right? It goes first Quran, then then the prophetic teachings, right? When when again when you have certain certain like an evidence, where 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 the evidence is from a, a, a really close companion. Yes. From the Prophet Muhammad so some, so, and he's narrating it to people that compiled these uh, compiled these narrations, right? Yes. These these people who compiled the narrations. We have the we have their name, we have their last name, we have their lineage, we yes. have their biographies. We have some. We have like what they did in life, what they didn't do. Who the like? We have a lot about. We know a lot about these these people that um, that uh, the that were companions of the Prophet Muhammad so. and the people that uh, um, compiled the 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 hadith the hadith books, right? Yes. And so these are evidences for us. That's why I'm saying that Ismailism, your your history, you have to go back to these to these sources, right? These are these are you can say they're Sunni sources, right? Uh, and then after the the split came, but still these you have to go back. Once you go back, once you understand what these things are, then you then you come to realize in your own self that okay, I'm I'm doing something wrong here. You know, yes. something is not right here, and. Yeah. And maybe I'll go later about how like Allah guides. Yes. And, and brother, too. just shortly uh, also tell us about the the Shahada too. Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Um, is it different in Ismailism or 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 is it the same? Because there's, I, I think have, there's a pledge of allegiance at the end. They yes. go, uh, they do the they do this three times. Yes. And each time they do it, the okay. first time they say Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah. The second time they say I should do Anna Muhammad Rasulullah. Yes. The third time they say, like Ali is the uh, uh, the Amir al the Amir okay. and the Mu'minin of yeah. Allah. Uh, okay. So. But I'm um, like, yeah. The, I think that's just a Shia thing, you know. Yes. But, uh, yeah. I'm not and sure. also, brother, uh, can you shortly tell us, just very short in short words, uh, what kind of dawa are you doing right now to the Ismailis? Okay. Dawah. Yes, like what, 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 uh, what, uh, what are you doing as far as dawah? Because Prophet Sallallahu said, "Balligh anni wa la ayah." Even if you know the uh, um, one word, one ayah from the Quran, you you convey it to others. Do you have any uh, any intentions of do, doing dawah in uh, future, or any dawah you're doing right now to the Ismailis, uh, so they can find uh, the truth like you did? You know, like sometimes, like uh, in terms of the dawah that I'm doing. Uh, I would say like that that was uh, like if you if it uh, like like the the first dao that I did was like you know obviously to my to my family and everything yes. that didn't go so well right so it's kind of hard to get like to get back into it and I have I have learned like how to I say interact with people okay. and so alhamdulillah like alhamdulillah um, I don't mind giving like I'm doing this because because. This is this is important, right? This is dawah. This is dawah. This is dawah. What we're yes, doing, right? This is dawah. Yes. Me and you, we're not doing this because we we don't like the Ismaili community. We want to give them a hammer. We want to, you know, yes. uh, like make beat them up, make them sad, make them do do this, right? We want we we have family in the Ismaili community, yes. right? 
Why, why would I want to hurt my family? Why would you want to hurt your family? We make, we, I'm helping you make this video and you're the one who's leading this whole thing because we love the Ismaili community. We're not trying to like, um, uh, you know, we're just trying to bring you, uh, we feel that your Islam and definitely our Islam could be better by learning more about the roots of Islam. When you yes. learn more about the roots of Islam, you go, you go back to the roots of Islam. Yes. And you realize that, uh, that, you know, this Islam that's laced with shirk, that's laced with calling upon like dead people, that's uh, laced with asking help from living, living things, uh, this Islam that's laced with like wearing, you know, necklaces that, that have like a blue, yes blue thing with uh with the eye on it yes you know this islam that's that's also based with the necklace that has a hand the hand of fatima right mm -hmm. you know this this is the shirk that we want to protect our smiley community from yes right this these pendants and these people they cannot help you on the day of judgment if if sorry if this pen right here right mm -hmm. i say that i wear this on my neck because it's a keepsake from evil, mm. right? I now, what I did now is I left, I left the protection that Allah was giving to me and I, now I, I, I gave that protect, that now this thing is protecting me. Mm. Yes. How can this thing protect me from evil? Yes, absolutely. Do you know what I'm saying? Yes. How can the, if that blue necklace with the, with the pendant or a person, how can he uh, like, uh, protect me from Absolutely. evil, you Absolutely. know? Yeah. Can you protect me from evil? No. no? If I was at home, you know, and I burn my hand, are you going to call me and say, oh, watch out for the stove, you know? Yes. No, you're not going to call me. No. You know, similarly, because we, I don't know. Sim like, similarly, the Imam doesn't know either. Yes. When you're asking him for strength, when you're asking the, the Imam for health, when you're asking the Imam for wealth, you know? Absolutely. When you're asking him for, like, guidance, Absolutely. that's a big thing. Yes. Yeah, guidance. Yes. Guidance, you, some... Allah says in the Quran, like you have to think for yourself. Yes. Sometimes you have to think for yourself. You go, you go ask the people that are, that are, that are um, like uh, their leaders, their leaders over you, right? Yes. And they're they're knowledgeable over you, right? And if you don't, if you if you don't have knowledge, you have to go somewhere else, right? Yes. And so, like you you, uh, okay. yeah, you just realize that you can't uh, you can't mm. this shirk is a is a big problem in the exactly. Ismaili community and that's the fundamental reason why you have you have to leave it and why I left it Absolutely. because you, you can't leave your affairs on a day of judgment to people Absolutely. or to pendants or to the to the hand of Fatima you can only leave your affairs with Allah Absolutely. and so you have to go directly to Allah and you can't and you can't go through people mm -hmm. right and again, the Prophet Muhammad did not go, did not ask us to go through him to go to the to the to did not ask us to go through him to go to Allah. To he said to he said, Let me help you. You go around me and you go directly to Allah. You, he showed I'll us. show you the I'll show you the the way, right? He showed us to ask Allah straight. Yeah. What kind of advice, brother, can you give the Ismaili community? The Ismaili community? Yes, what advice can you give them? I would say, you know what, for the for the I want to give advice to the to the layman, you know. Okay. Uh, no, layman meaning me too as well, right? I, or the what like the Ismaili community, the the people that are young, the people that are you know, uh, teenagers, the teach the people that are like parents, you know, in their twenty twenties or you know thirties, forties, fifties. You 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 guys can pick up a book, no problem on the on the fundamentals of Islam, and you can you can. Or on the roots of Islam and you're able to just easily even on your phone just just realize like not just realize, but just read you know with the, Allah just asks you to be sincere if you're sincere then Allah will guide you it might take you for some people intellectually speaking like they, uh, they have PhDs or whatever it's going to take them a long time to maybe accept you know yes because they have to read a lot but some people it's like oh okay um, you know heaven and hell I don't want to go to hell I want to go to heaven, you know, yes. it's like a reward thing. But that's, that's everybody, everybody's life, you know. Yes. You don't want, you know, people, uh, when the government says don't park, don't park there, because I'm going to give you a ticket, you're, you're not going to park there because yes. you're scared of getting a ticket, right? Yes. So that's a fear, fa that's a fear, fear thing, you know. So same thing how Allah, te how Allah guides, guides people, mm -hmm. you know. He, some people, He guides them 
guides them yes. through intellectually, right? Absolutely. Some people he guides them uh, through just fear, you know. Some people he guides them through like uh, you know guides them like that, right? Absolutely. So, um, in terms of the advice for the the Ismaili community, uh, go back to your roots. Your your roots start with the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu. Start with start with re revelation. Start with his you know biography. You know, uh, when you learn these things, start and also his companions. Yes. Because sometimes uh, you read about the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, and then you can also get like uh, more detail about how the 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 companions companions um, mm -hmm. like uh, like emulated the Prophet, mm -hmm. right? If anybody is going to be closer to the Prophet. Salam. It's going to be the it's going to be the Sahabas, yes. right? Yeah. And so, and um, so we have to go back to the roots, learn these things, and then and then again, and then ask ourselves, okay, what's what's happening here? What am I doing mm -hmm. that is uh, that is contrary to Islam? Mm -hmm. And what can I be doing mm -hmm. that could be that could bring me closer to Islam, mm -hmm. right? If you if the if the answer if one of the answers that you find is that you know. There, there's a, a better way of life, a better way of living, mm -hmm. then ultimately you're not lying to me, you're not lying to Hayat, you're not lying to anybody, you're just lying to yourself, yes. and you're, you're lying to basically Allah, right? Yes, absolutely. And so you're just putting yourself in like a, a situation where um, you don't want to be in, because absolutely. again, this life is 80 years, yes. and hereafter is uh, a real long time, right? Absolutely. So, yes. Uh, Lastly, I would like to say that the way Allah guides is a few ways. Yes. Um, in terms of like the, the story of Ibrahim, right? Yes. Uh, if you go to the Quran, uh, when Ibrahim, he called, he asked Allah. He said, Ya Allah, I know I have, I want to see mm -hmm. how you bring uh, the dead back to life. Mm -hmm. Right? Yes. And Allah says, do you not believe in me? Mm -hmm. Why do you need to see, right? Mm -hmm. And yes. Ibrahim is like, um, I just want to know in my heart, yes. and I want to see with my eyes, yes. so that I get certainty, yes. right? Islam tells us you can have certainty three ways. Mm -hmm. You can have certainty in your, like intellectually, mm -hmm. right? You open the Quran, and there's a lot of logical evidences, mm -hmm. so you'll be certain, right, that way, and you'll be like, oh wow, Islam is true, right? Mm -hmm. The proper Islam is true. Yes. You can have certainty in your heart. Yes. Well, like when I was saying that, you know, Allah, like, He protected me from, from certain shirk, mm -hmm. right? Yes. And when I would go to that shirk, mm -hmm. right, and I, and I would in, engage in it, mm -hmm. my heart wasn't in it, mm -hmm. right? From a young age, mm -hmm. right? That's Allah protecting me yes. through my feelings, right? So Allah, Allah, Allah gives you certainty through, your, through knowledge, yes. through, uh, through your feelings, Yes. And then lastly, Allah gives you certainty through your eyes so yes. by seeing, yes. and that's and that's the certainty certainty that Ibrahim wanted, mm. right? Ibrahim knew Allah, mm. right? Yes. He knew Allah that he knew that Allah could he knew Allah could bring uh, dead back to life. Yes, he knew. He was certain of him through his feelings, you know. Mm -hmm. He's a prophet, yes. but he wanted he never saw he mm. never saw uh, the miracle, mm. right? So Allah told him. Go get a bird mm -hmm. that that you can train to come back to you. Yes. Right. Cut when you get once you, you train that bird. Cut that bird into pieces. Yes. Put it on uh, a few hilltops. Yes. You know, on top of like a mountains, yes. three four mountains, right? Mm -hmm. And then call it back to you. Subhanallah. And then wallahi, those birds came back. Yes. And then Allah had, and then Ibrahim had certainty in his eyes, so he had certainty three ways. Yeah. And so Allah. And so Allah, the smile of the community, or any anybody, like anybody that's not Muslim, or even Muslims themselves, like Allah will guide you many ways, right? And we're not, but we're not like a one type of human being. We're not. We we have feelings, we have emotions, we have uh, we have a mind, right? He's gonna guide you th through a bunch of ways, right? And so you just have to be open. You have to open up your heart and say, Yeah, Allah, like I wanna I wanna be close to you. I wanna be close to your prophet. Uh, I want to. I want to be saved on the last day. Uh, I want. I want intercession. I want all these things, but you just need to be sincere. Once you're sincere, yes. then Allah will open a whole bunch of doors for you. Yes. You know, and that's 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 the thing that I can say to not just the Ismaili community, but, but you know, 
just generally overall general. overall everybody you know and mostly myself because you know I'm all you I'm not perfect yes. you know nobody's perfect and we're always striving to be better Muslims right yes so that's the that's the thing and uh, at the end uh, we would like to thank brother Habib Khambari to take out uh, his uh, time from his busy schedule and coming in and we would like to uh, also congratulate him on coming to the Dean of Islam and uh, and thank Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us such a precious friend and also somebody who can show us uh, and guide us um, uh, and our community to the way of Quran and to the way of uh, to the Allah uh, the way of the uh, the word of Allah and now uh, brothers and sisters you know Quran is available in, in, in many different translations yeah. and that you could go it's online that uh, that one can go and check the translations and check the meaning of the Quran and read the Quran and, and read the word of Allah and that's what uh, Allah says you know uh, to the Prophet وسلم, that the way of guidance is the way of Quran and Prophet وسلم, also told us that if you follow two things you will never be misguided which one is the Quran and the second is uh, the way of his life, the way the, his sunnah and his Ahl al-Bayt and that's what brother um, uh, Habib has told us in his uh, in his story um, uh, to Islam that you know Quran, Quran and Quran and also the way of uh, the Prophet Sallallahu I thank you brothers and sisters for uh, listening to our episode today um, again, we would like to uh, thank Habib Kambari to give us his, uh, his time and uh, we will see you in uh, the next episode. Thank you very much. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.